Welcome back. Recall we were in the middle of a discussion about differential GPS. Recall, too, that the basic idea of differential GPS is to take advantage of, build in a reference receiver that is in the neighborhood of the roving receiver. And the idea there is to subtract the reference measurements from the rover measurements to annihilate or at least reduce the errors which are common to the two. And so today we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper and try and talk about which errors are likely to be common mode and therefore very much reduced by differential GPS and which errors are difference mode. They're simply different at the reference and the rover and therefore represent still a challenge for the differential GPS user. Here's our, our sketch of differential GPS. Recall <coughs> that this is our very simplified diagram for a satellite. I'll put the solar panels back on. Here's the reference, and here's the rover. We mentioned last time that if the clock offset of the satellite, capital B, the clock offset of the satellite relative to GPS system time has an error in it. That would be common mode. So we don't even show it here in this diagram. However, if the satellite ephemeris information, the information descri that describes where the satellite is, if that contains error into it, we can depict that here as this vector from the true location to the broadcast or advertised location. That error may not cancel completely. It might be mostly reduced, but appreciate that when we look at that vector connecting true to ephemeris, it may project onto the line of sight to the rover here's the projection, a little bit differently than it projects onto the line of sight to the reference. So ephemeris errors, errors in the broadcast location of the satellite, are reduced by differential GPS but not totally canceled. Similarly, as the ray comes down to the rover and the reference, it travels across the ionosphere. Now, if the reference and rover are very close to each other, let's say within 10 kilometers, then those two crossings are really almost the same. They go through the same chunk of the ionosphere. As the reference and rover move apart, these two pieces also move apart, and the ionospheric cancellation, delta I, is no longer perfect. Similarly, the tropo delays are introduced by that column of troposphere that surrounds the wave going from the satellite to the rover minus the column of troposphere that surrounds the wave going from the satellite to the reference. Once again, if reference and rover are very close to each other, those cancel nearly perfectly. <clears throat> As reference and rover move apart, you can have more of a difference. So, those are the errors that are really attacked by and reduced by differential GPS. They include the satellite clock, perfectly canceled, ephemeris, mostly canceled, iono, mostly canceled most of the time, and tropo, mostly canceled. Now, let's take a look at the errors that comprise our catch-all noise term. You've seen it in the far right of all of our measurement equations, the Greek letter nu. A multipath induced error is not correlated from rover to reference. The likelihood that a wave would bounce off a building located more or less exactly the same distance from the reference antenna as the rover antenna is very small. So we count in this catch-all term new 
errors induced by reflections because the reflections are due to the immediate environment of the rover and the immediate environment of the reference. <clears throat> Similarly, natural noise or radio frequency interference from man-made sources tend to affect the reference and the rover very differently. So those are examples of terms that survive differential GPS error processing. Let's take a look how this comes together on a calm day. So we'll begin by talking about delta I. <clears throat> and what we have here is a map of the United States. I'll sketch it very quickly for you just so you can pick up on it. All of Mexico is also shown here. Going down here. Here's Baja, California, and a little bit of southern Canada is shown as well. And the contours plotted on top of this are delta I when viewed by a satellite at zenith, in other words, directly overhead. As that satellite moves towards the horizon, the contribution of the ionosphere will become greater and greater because the wave is going through a greater thickness of the ionosphere. But let's just manage our problem by normalizing it to the vertical. Notice that the numbers are pretty big. Uh, here we have a contour of six meters. And here's uh, five meters. And here's four meters. So if we were to place a GPS receiver immediately under a satellite at one of those contour locations, this would not give us delta I, it would give us I. So it would give us, let's say, directly IU or IR. Delta I would be driven by how far apart are the user and the reference. So take a look at this map and imagine, let's say, the user here and the reference here. That looks like a few hundred kilometers there in terms of scaling relative to the US map. And the contours don't change that dramatically over this distance. I think we're going from, let's say, uh, 4.9 to 5.2. So delta I here would be something like 0 0.3. <clears throat> think ahead a little bit. We're trying to improve the accuracy of GPS from, let's say, 10 meters down to 1 meter. So a delta I of 0 0.3 doesn't sound too bad. It's OK. Uh, it, it means that differential GPS has been helpful. Certainly, the 0 0.3 differential I, delta I, over that baseline is very small compared to the whole value of I that we would have suffered if we didn't have some differential correction or good model for what the ionosphere is doing. So bear in mind, this is an ionosphere for a calm day. Later on, I'll show you what happens on a storm day. But uh, for now, let's stick to uh, the calm day. <clears throat> In this case, calm day, we can put together an error budget for differential GPS that looks like this. Remember, we put together a few of these. We had a first error budget for standalone GPS. We had a second error budget for GPS, or standalone GPS inclusive of smoothing the pseudo range and the impact of geometry. And here's a third error budget for DGPS. The most dramatic difference of the DGPS error budget relative to the first or second is that the terms, the errors in the bias column are much smaller. Notice I've used my 0 0.3 here for IONO. I have caveated it by saying something about space weather. We'll return to that in the next snippet. But for the time being, let's let that uh, value stand. I've left 0 0.3 meters in there for tropo for similar reasons. Even though the tropo bias is reduced, there's a little bit of residual due to the fact that the two rays, rover and reference, are going through different 
chunks of the troposphere. Multipath 0.3 of random plus 0.3 of bias. You might say, well, uh, uh, that, that sounds a little bit unfair. That's a smaller values than you used in the first and the second error budgets. But what has happened is that since differential GPS has driven down the size of the biases, uh, the biases have been reduced. Due to that, the manufacturers have implemented better techniques in the receivers to reduce the impact of multipath and receiver noise. And so I've also taken account of that improvement. If you put together the whole story, we can look left to right and have total values which are equal to the RSS sum of the random squared plus the bias squared. And uh, that works from left to right. We can also move down the columns, sum up the random errors, sum up the bias errors, also in an RSS sense, and get a very raw notion for the accuracy of the pseudo range measurement in view of all of these different error sources. We invoke smoothing to go from this row to this row. Smoothing means we're just going to average over time. Averaging over time doesn't help much with biases. They're constant for the averaging time of your receiver. But it does help reduce the random errors. So we've taken credit and driven the random errors from 0 0.4 meters, 4 decimeters, down to 1 decimeter. Pretty aggressive number, but it is absolutely something that's uh, feasible with today's technology. We go ahead, look at our RSS value for the smooth pseudo range, multiply it by horizontal DOP to estimate horizontal positioning accuracy, multiply it by VDOP to estimate vertical positioning accuracy. Now, <clears throat> please don't get the impression that this table describes every differential GPS system or every circumstance. It simply doesn't. Uh, an error budget like this is a wild first approximation of performance. When we come back, we'll dig a little bit more into what happens to the ionospheric row of this table on a day which is not calm in terms of space weather. It will, in fact, be a storm day. So when we return, we'll talk about the ionospheric effects on differential GPS. Thanks.